For centuries, mankind has been fascinated with realms outside of our conscious awareness. Through a series of interviews with practitioners, guest speakers, and experts, Liberate the podcast covers all that and more. From health and holistic healing to the supernatural, we aim to educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today we have a national best-selling author, Erica Ormsby, uh, joining us to talk about her book, talk about her life story, and more. So this book that she's wrote that's already a national bestseller that you can actually come here and see her live September 15th. So if you're listening to this beforehand, you know, come out to Liberate Hollywood. Maybe we'll figure out a way to live stream it too. So if you're joining us from anywhere else, but her book is I Am Happy, Healthy, and Free. And, you know, it's listening to uh, your TED talk and hearing a little bit about this, your story. I'm really interested to dive in deeper and get to know how you got to the place where you're at now and everything that inspired you. So Erica, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. This is a truly an honor. I think your you personally are amazing and I love your amazing facility. I, I cannot wait to actually physically get to be there. So ah, awesome. Well, <laughs> we can't wait for... to have you. And, you. um, and for you to share your wisdom and, you know, so let's get into a little bit of, you know, following one's dream and how you've taken that course to follow your dream um, and being in this place where you help inspire thousands of people to really tap into their true self, right? And so yeah. um, share a little bit with me about your your journey and how you got to where you're at right now. Well, let's see. The We'll do the shorter and then we'll okay. see. Yeah, we'll see where, <laughs> we'll see it goes. where we go. Yes, I love that. Um, well, the short, the shorter version is that, um, you know, growing up, I, I was about 13 years old and things really shifted overnight for me. I had a traumatic experience one evening um, and I just was not the same person when I woke up the next day. Um, and I, and things became very, very difficult for me. The, the world looked different. I saw myself differently. I saw other people differently. Mm -hmm. Um, I felt, I felt angry. I was scared. I, I completely just stepped out of whatever place I had been in as, as a kid feeling like, you know, the world was a big place and there was lots of opportunity and things were going to be, um, be okay. Um, and one night, you know, it was a sexual trauma, the next day it was like the world just looked scary and, and like it was going to hurt me wow. <laughs> to put it shortly. Um, and things really snowballed from that point. Um, I, I wasn't open about what happened. I, I hit it. Um, so my amazing family wasn't even able to really be there for that because I wasn't, I was not able to share what had happened. Um, and what, it resulted in is I ended up drinking heavily drugs. Everything just ended up, you know, coming right into yeah. my space so that I could, in my mind, thought I just wanted to not feel, I wanted to block out all my feelings. I wanted to feel better. I wanted to not, not remember, you know, um, and I progressed that way. And at 17, I tried to take my own life and wow. fortunately did not succeed. Yay. Cause I am here, <laughs> Yes, <laughs> but, um, and, and at that point, um, I, I had just hit such a crazy place of despair and hopelessness and it, and it, um, really rocked my world because at that point, um, I really only had up to go because I went from yeah. a place of not wanting to wake up to, okay, well, if I'm going to keep waking up, then how, how can I do this? Because I can't go on this way. And so as, as I share that, not to share, um, you know, I, I mean, it is, it is sad, but it's to, it's actually became a gift. And I, and that can sound cliche sometimes when we say these things, but, um, it truly was the catalyst for me being able to say, how can I do this life differently? How, yeah. how can I get through what I, you know, how can I feel different? How can I become happier, healthier, freer? Um, at the time it wasn't those words. I was really young. <laughs> it just sounded more like, how can I live and not want it, want to die, you know? Yeah. And so moving forward, it just sent me off on this journey of, 
of becoming very open to finding a way to feel better, as simply put. And it just went from one thing to another. I, I just became such an explorer. I, I read texts. I, I was, you know, I asked a million questions. I became, I dove heavy into science. I dove heavy into spirituality. Um, and then as my journey continued, you know, I had a lot more ups and downs after that. It didn't, my life didn't go, Oh, yay. Rainbows appeared. Yeah. Um, but it was, it was all for the greater good because at this point it led me to today, which is, um, after all that searching and discovering, I just realized that it was a lot less difficult to get to this place of happiness and health than I had, than I had thought. And I feel so compelled to join the conversation in the tribe that's speaking out all over the world saying, you know what, if you, we can wake up and we can wake up into a completely different space in our life experience and our experience with others and we can heal and be happy and free and it doesn't have to take forever. <laughs> so, yeah, it, that's that's the beautiful thing. I think a lot of people think that change needs to be this long drawn out process. But I mean, look at I don't I I rarely see anybody that will fight the the idea that when a tragedy hits your life that you can be vastly different overnight, right? You mm -hmm. know, so hearing that story that you know, you had that tragedy happen at 13 and you woke up and you seen the world in a darker, dimmer place, you know, um, people don't argue that. But it's interesting that people think that you can't shift it the opposite way and have an awareness shift that allows you to start to see things brighter, lighter and more beautiful. And, you know, they're the opposite of the coin, you know, where the light switch and the dark switch, you know, like the, the, the flicker is just as easy to turn on as it is to turn off. And so um, I love that you were able to do that and you were able to do that at 17, you know, like that, that, that's, that's amazing, you know, like that, you know, a lot of people are still, you know, in that screw the world type of thing and not really centered in their self. And you're like, okay, well, I'm at this dark place and I want to look at how can I feel better and how can I dive into everything? You know, is there, is there a book or, um, or, or a song or a person that helped inspire you the most that was that North like compass for you? You know, I, I, there, there are so many people that I admire, have gleaned from, learned from it's every day, um, at this point that there isn't a one single text, but I can tell you that, uh, you know, I, I do love breaking the habit of being yourself. That's what's coming to mind right now. Mm. Um, I don't, I don't know if you have heard of that. I book. have heard of and it. I haven't read it yet, but I have heard of it. I, I just love it because, um, I do have a draw at this point to, because sometimes, um, these ideas of like, like you were saying, like that, you know, being able to flip the switch, mm -hmm. um, what I found, because I'm, it's, it's so interesting and I don't know if you can relate to this, but I, I think, in the abstract and I can see the big picture and I can, I can hold these concepts that sometimes seem very esoteric, like, you know, uh, and conceptual, like happiness yeah. and health, you know, you can't hold them necessarily, you know, you can't hold happiness in your hand. Um, yes, I'm, I'm equally scientific and pragmatic. And mm -hmm. so it's been a very interesting thing because, you know, I, I'm always, my mind, the way that I, it's like, almost like I came in this way, I can hold this thing, this idea of happiness. And then I immediately go to, um, pulling it into some type of pragmatic process so that it's becomes more attainable or understandable. Mm. I, I just don't think they're out in the ether, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, and so, um, I do love the breaking power, the, uh, breaking the habit of being yourself just because he it's Joe Dispenza. I loved that the way that he laid out, um, he, he just does a great job of taking yeah. these often unreachable ideas and pulling them into practical pieces yeah. of understanding. So I, I appreciate that. There, there's been so many though. Um, and, and I do want to say that, so at 17, it was amazing to hit that kind of moment to go, it's going to, it's, it's going to shift, like have such a shift, mm -hmm. but I have to say that it, it, it was the beginning more, more better stated, better stated on my part was it was the beginning of, yeah. of an awakening that took, I mean, sister. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, oh, like <laughs> so many things. And we're constantly awakening, right? Oh. And evolving. The moment that we think that we're getting close to enlightenment or understanding, we're 10 steps behind, right? You know, because oh, yeah. there's just, you know, so much to learn and discover, not only about ourselves, the universe, the world, the planet, others, you know, like, and it, it's it's realizing that there's always going to be things that happen in our life that impact us. Right. And that always, so how do we learn and grow from that? Absolutely. And, and you know, I think today, so this book, um, that, that I just wrote that I am happy, healthy, free was, mm-hmm. was so, um, it was really interesting just being really transparent. Um, I felt like I had to, I, I swallowed a lot of my ego, um, in, in the sense that there's, I don't know, I'm, I'm also in a higher academic, you know, it's like I'm, I'm an academic, but then I'm, I'm, I just have come to this place of there's so many things that can sound so complicated and so out of reach and the, the words are big and the concepts are big and, and you can get into these like circles of theory and, um, and these ideas of happiness and health and all this just seems, just further and further and further out of, um, people's reach, you know, and I know that it even including mine and today it's, uh, I went through this 20 year process of, of, you know, learning and discovering and reading and implementing and breaking down and, and breaking through and, you know, just a a wreck. And then, oh my gosh, I, and a realization, you know, this whole thing. And, uh, and today I, I am, baffled at the simplicity. Yeah. Simplicity has become the, it's, it's simplicity there. It's, it's not in the complexity of it all. It's, it's not in the, in the efforting of, of this complex of these complex things of how to heal. It's so the message today is very, is very, very simple. And I feel like that's the truth, you know, for me and in sharing. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> so the, the simplicity and that, I mean, when we really, we're, we're these meaning making machines, right? So we sit there and we make all this meaning into everything. We make things more complicated, but you know, um, that that's really something to highlight what you're saying is that people get carried away with so much in their life, especially these big, um, f- you know, states of being happiness, healthy, free, or whatever it may be. Um, Mm -hmm. but it's simple, you know, it is, it's, you know, it's a natural ability for us to let go. If we let go of all of the reasons and the meaning and our expectations and, um, judgments and so much concern with Mm. what the other thinks about us instead of us just being us, you know, like kids Absolutely. and their nature in their form, you know, when they're not worried about the kids on the playground, you know, they're, they're just playing, they're being, they're being their self. They can express their emotions. They can cry. They can laugh. They can, they're not worried whether their shirt looks appropriately or whether they're, you know, like they don't care. Right. No, it's, it, they're in the moment and it's simple. <laughs> in the moment and it's simple. And that's, that's the thing that, you know. Uh, about what you said, you know, it even even when people try to do like tasks, like in life, they make it like, you know, which we're going to get into following one stream and the simple process that you've uh, developed and helped uh, utilizing your scientific mind and everything and the in your life experience, put that together. Um, but yeah, you know, like people will make a big deal about, you know, doing their laundry, for instance, like if, they, if it's building up, right? Or if they have yeah. to write a certain email, but really if you chunk it down to the smallest mm. portion, what are you really doing? You're separating some clothes and you're throwing <laughs> it into a machine and pressing a button, or you're going on a computer and you're pressing a few t- keys. I mean, you're really not doing anything complex. No, or it's no. all in here. We think that it's so complex. <laughs> oh yes, I love what you said. The me- we're meaning making machines. That's yeah. that's perfectly put. <laughs> it is. We can make we can make some wild meaning. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about this, you know, process and these steps that you help uh, people through your, your, your talks, your coaching, your 
um, through your book, through, you know, taking that and saying, how do people find their self and how do people start following their dreams? And why is it so hard for people to follow their dreams? Mm. Thank you. I love that. Um, that's, that is such a passion of mine. Clearly that's (laughs) in the, the book title, but, but, um, so I feel like the idea of following our dreams is the, it's the easier way to, you know, of, of staying, it's the, it's almost like the quantifiable ber- version, the physical form of what it looks like to stay true to yourself, you yeah. know, uh, to oneself. And, um, in my, in my journey, you know, I, I kept discovering that so much of what I was doing or what I felt, felt driven to do, or, um, was like we were saying, like that was very complicated and stressful and overwhelming was I, I kept finding myself wanting to create what I wanted for my life based on other people's, um, expectations and other people's ideas of who I needed to be or what I needed to be. Even if it was never even explicitly said like, Erica, you need to be blank. It was just, you know, coming into the, the, the human culture, (laughs) the perceptions of it, you know, absolutely. And this, this looking outward and, and just as a child going, okay, so, you know, uh, to be successful, you need to do this to be liked. You need to do this to be, uh, loved. You need to do that. There was all these kind of perceived meanings that, that I was making from, from all of my surroundings. And I feel like, um, and that's what, you know, we were kind of t- touching on before is yeah. that's kind of how we roll, you know, until we have some type of shift of awareness. Mm-hmm. And that's where that simplicity came because I, I, I'm always, um, what I'm sharing mostly today, there, there's a lot of, a lot about personal power, okay. a lot about stepping into our power. Um, because the idea that, um, I, I truly believe power, powerlessness is an illusion, Mm-hmm. And that being, meaning that, um, you know, these, this idea that our freedom is, is outside, our happiness is outside, our health is outside of us has been such a profound misunderstanding. And I can say that coming from the more, uh, having such a like practical side of me, I know when people tend to hear the idea of like, you know, just, just, you know, pay attention to your thoughts, pay attention to, Mm -hmm. to, you know, what you're, what you're thinking and your thought life and how you're feeling and you're feeling like people hear that and go, yeah, okay. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. That sounds great. And, and just, it doesn't even, it's it's not even. And, and so even though it's simple, it's hitting a brick wall. Mm-hmm. And it's like the brick wall that's keep, that's the distance between someone feeling great about their life and their life staying exactly where it is. And so I've just really ice like honed in on building a case of understanding of why and how we are so powerful internally and mm-hmm. what that means to our external creation of our life. Because we've heard the messaging, you know, yeah. and, and, and there, people won't fight it. You know, they'll, yeah, you know, I was one of them, you know. Yeah, yeah. It, it resonates and yeah, sounds, you know, but then it, it seems so out there. It's almost like, oh, yeah, we're going to plan that vacation for two years from now. It's like it's so distant that it doesn't seem like it's a reality in the now that people can exactly. take in. Exactly. And, and I think, so one thing you know, is helping people understand how, you know, why, why we don't, why, why, why it's so hard to believe that how, you know, creating, like following our dreams or creating our life or how our thoughts affect our life. It's just even gaining an understanding of, of why and how our culture even got here. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you'd, if you'd be open to sharing a tiny bit there, just uh, if you're open to that. That. About, about how the, just how we even, you know, just, just culturally, like where, how we shifted from, you know, being, um, just how we've, how we've separated physical, the seen and the unseen, why they're so separate, yeah. um, in some cultures in American, I'll, you know, we're more in the American culture here, but, yeah. but it's separate in lots of cultures. Um, it's, it's, it, it is, I mean, I think that people, people get into this perspective or this thought process of, uh, 
you know, um, if I can't see it, it doesn't exist. If it's not here, then it's unknown. And it's like, the interesting part is like, people don't have to understand everything in order to accept everything. Right. You know, right. Like going back to, since I used the light switch example before, if somebody turns on a light switch, I mean, you know, the, the, the famous saying from, um, it does like, he does a quote in secret, like you don't have to understand how electricity works in order to utilize it but you know and so yeah we don't need to know everything but yet then there's some things like I'm just like you and I dive into the science aspect of things and I like to uh use that to make people's minds broaden right right because the unseen forces or the unseen aspects it's like well you know we're floating around on a globe And we're held together by an imaginary force called gravity. And we really are just space. I mean, every, I mean, like I've said this in one of my other uh, sessions before, but I'm so blown away by the quantum, the physics of that every human being in this planet, 7.2 billion people will, their density of actual physical mass fit in a sugar cube. (laughs) I think that I know it, right? And so it's like, right. okay, so there's uh, these on scene and these, there's these scenes. And I think that we also, just like life going through these ups and downs over the years, and like, I mean, I'd, I'd love to hear all your feedback and, and thoughts on this. Um, you know, we go through different phases within our culture and our society where we place so much emphasis. If you go back and historically, uh, you know, yeah. look at, you know, ancient cultures like the Mayan or like, you know, whatnot, Uh in that they place so much on the unseen, right? And then we go into, okay, now everything needs to be on the scene level. Uh And then now are we getting more into swinging that pendulum and saying, okay, there's a balance. integration. Yes. And integrating. No, absolutely. It's been, um, the American culture, we, our science is based, um, predominant, you know, it started in the 1600s moving into, you know, it created Descartes was, you know, the beginning of, um, kind of the beginning of where and where our science is, is founded on. And it yeah. was that idea of, you know, if the mind, the mind cannot be studied or, you know, cannot be objectively put, uh, um, into the same laws as, as, you know, the, the physical world. So it just cannot be scientifically studied. And then you fast forward us into yeah. our culture today and it just, it just sort of happened, you know, over time it was like, okay, uh, you know, over hundreds of years, but today it's, that's why it's such a far reach. Um, and I know you, you relate on this where it's, it's such a far reach for people to go, okay, I hear what you're saying. My thought. Mm. So if my thoughts and my feelings have an, have a direct impact in the, the creation of my life experience to the degree of my physical reality, my physical body my mm-hmm. physical surroundings, um, then why don't we all know about that? And oh. that just seems pretty amazing. So why, why, yeah. that? why don't we know about it? And then <laughs> why, why don't we <laughs> integrate it too? Because I right. think that there's a more collective or starting to be collective understanding. I mean, I live in a little bubble in my, my area in Los Angeles, but I, I feel that there's a larger understanding of collective of how, emotional pain and trauma starts to be linked into disease, especially, uh, you know, um, I mean, they, I mean, I was reading even an article recently that my friend has pretty severe endometriosis and that it's linked to sexual trauma and that Mm -hmm. there's a huge correlation between that. And so like, you know, but all of this, like we're starting to have that science that starts to fill it and there's a collective understanding that, okay, yeah, maybe, uh, this person got lung cancer and they have some sadness or pain, right? You know, so we're right. starting to get there, but we we're are. still also, it's that delayed response, right? You know, it's kind of, mm-hmm. it's it's the mindset. It's almost like we're in this juvenile brain development of our life experience, right? You know, right. and that juvenile brain development, the frontal co- cortex isn't developed, so the rational reasoning isn't you know? And so right. people like, you know, g- have a candy bar now or have a thing later, you know, it's like that, that process of understanding what the, um, 
what the cause of effects are going to be down the line and the planning and, and understanding of that doesn't seem to interlink. And so I don't know sure. what, you know, the answer is to that, but I think what you're doing with a lot of the motivation and coaching and with how you're inspiring and relating what somebody can grab a hold of in a scientific way and bringing in these more like nominal, like, elements and saying how do we find this and utilize this and how do we create those steps you know I love that and yes and I and I think it's like what we're doing even right now if you think of like um something like germ theory you know Mm -hmm. the and and when that was trying to make its way and you know and there was a you know young young medical um doctor that was, you know, what I think we should wash our hands, but I'm simplifying it, but I think yeah. we need to wash our hands and, and clean off all, you know, sterilize the utensils before surgery. That seems to you and I, and everyone today, we're like, yeah, that's a great idea. We should definitely, we should definitely wash our hands and sterilize yeah. the utensils before surgery. Um, seems like a no brainer, but when that was initially introduced year, you know, hundreds of, it's been like almost what, 200 to 270 years ago, it took almost, it, it took like a little over 200 years for that idea to be accepted and integrated. Wow. Initially that person was treated like uh, as a nut job, lost their, you know, lost all credibility. It was mocked at, laughed at, not integrated. Um, it took that long. So, so it's, <clears throat> I think it's fun to, and take some of the judgment off and some of the, you know, for, for us, we're, we're like, okay, it's, it's pretty normal for us to have some pretty big things that make a lot of sense, take a little bit of time to make their way into, to the, to our culture. Um, and so what I love about that, what makes me feel less, um, rushed about it is this is how it happened (laughs) is through people. Okay. We're going to keep talking about this. We're going to keep exploring it. We're going to keep finding new things. And, you know, a few generations out this, this will be completely Completely understood and known totally normal. And so when I think of at least my grandchildren, (laughs) 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 they're going to come in and it'll be first nature. Um, we're just, we're, we're like a a bridge. So, and it's fine, you know? Um, but, uh, but I, it is true. And I think, I think just validating, um, you know, that it's, that it is these beliefs and kind of unearthing these beliefs that we've had, you know, that, that sometimes we can hold. I used to think that it was, it took forever. It took a lot of time to change. Mm -hmm. It was very hard to change. That happiness was something that, that was, um, very much, very hard to get to hard and out of reach, very circumstantial. Um, it's all these beliefs. Money was hard to, to make, you know, anything worth having is hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, so then all of a sudden there's a strong underneath everything. It's like, okay. So if, if those are core beliefs in our culture that, that, you know, the best things are, are hard to, hard to get kind of thing. Well, I mean, look at on the back of every, every dollar bill, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Oh yeah. Not the attainment. Yes. (laughs) And so the be state of, (laughs) you know, which I think that's great. I love that. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) So, I mean, this is, you know, but I think where, where you're getting at is that a lot of this isn't even belong to us. And so when we can have patience and kindness to ourselves and generosity and saying, okay, I am a byproduct of my environment and my beliefs and my upbringing and all of this stuff. But mm-hmm. I'm taking a stand to know that mm-hmm. I can change. And it doesn't have to be hard and drawn out and long. But in the event that it takes a little bit of time to process or okay. integrate, that's okay too, you know? Okay. Yes, exactly. I, I love that. It's 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 true. I mean, it, it really is. Um, today, I think, um, like when you asked, you know, what was – you know, just kind of the thing in my journey, I, Mm -hmm. it's, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry (laughs) with with this idea, but it was just when I gave myself permission to question, Mm. question things that I held so 
they, I mean, I used to, I just had things that I'd never even questioned. You know, I, I just, there was no, I didn't even leave any space to even question. Is that true for me? Yeah. Does it take a long time? Is that true? Like who said that? Like, yeah, I mean, where, where did that come from? I, I just didn't quite. And I, and which was funny and inter- ironic and interesting is that I've um, always felt like I was like, um, kind of a rogue mission in a lot of ways. I mean, just as a kid, you know, I was always doing the weird thing and, you know, I was, I couldn't, I was constantly incessantly asking questions, but it was really eye opening when I saw on and not in a judgmental way, but just, just in a curious, like, wow, this is so wild. I had just not questioned my own beliefs. Mm -hmm. I didn't even, it didn't, it just didn't even occur to me that doing so could be useful on a very practical level. It was, it was like, well, no, this means that, Yeah. this means that, this means that, this means that. And so as I studied forward, it was, you know, there's lots of reasons why and it simplifies our life to just make quick judgments and kind yeah. of just not question things. Um, and it's uncomfortable, but you nailed it earlier. You said something about, you know, that's the, um, what if we were something along lines about uncertainty, Mm-hmm. you know, at having a willing, a willingness to be uncertain. And, um, it takes that, that's like this simple shift. If I'm going, I, I'm I willing to start questioning? Mm-hmm. Can I just give myself permission to question? Yeah. And if that's so, can I sit with uncertainty? Mm-hmm. Because if I'm going to move into a place I have not been, so if I want to be happy, if I want to be healthy, mm-hmm. and I look back and I haven't been very healthy and I haven't been very happy, then I'm getting ready for me to even um, go into an exploration of this. I have yeah. to. I'm going to some place I've never been. That's- that would have to be an uncertain moment and an uncertain space, and that uncertainty is that's the forward. But if we're in a physically focused mindset where everything is certain, like I hold ha- if I can't hold happiness as a rock in my hand <laughs> and play with it, you know, or yeah. use it and put it in my pocket, um, I can't deal. Yeah. And if it's like, that's, it's just a shift. Like you've already said in perception where, you know, what if, what if I could question this? What if I could question the level of difficulty here? What if it could be easy? Mm-hmm. What if it could be quick? You know, what if I didn't judge it? Is that possible? You yeah. know, it's a big what if, curious. And I mean, we just, we are designed for, um, you know, lack of a better word, we're just, I mean, we are just, we are just open, expanding, flowing, beautiful, mind-blowingly awesome human beings. And it's mm-hmm. the minute we take the walls off, we yeah. just naturally flow like, like a river. It's so it becomes so, and that's where the simplicity is. Like we can make it, we can go deep quantum physics, which I love cause I'm weird and I love that, but <laughs> you, I think you are too, maybe. So yes. I'm like, oh, so we can talk, <laughs> um, but not everyone wants to know all that stuff. So, yeah. but it, it's just, it's this, if you don't need to know all the little nuts and bolts of that, just being willing to question and be open, it's like, oh my gosh, why is everything starting to work out? Yeah. Why do I feel a hundred pounds lighter? Why mm-hmm. is my day so much less crazy? Mm-hmm. You know, this is great. And then can I keep, can I keep moving forward? Yeah. Um, it's, it's very different from our very linear physical norm that's mm-hmm. definitely shifting, but, um, it's just, it's fun. It's a lot more fun for crying out loud. We're so creative, all of us. So we get so bored with our certainty, but yet we'll hang on to it like a, well, but like in, a, in the irony of it is that nothing's certain anyway. So it's our illusion no. of certainty. Like to, tomorrow will never be today. And I don't no. know any person in this world that has ever planned an event, a wedding, a thing or whatever that they put a lot of time and energy into It never turns out the way that you plan ever. No, no. But that's the beauty of it. Most of the time, it's great. Yeah, exactly. Well, and a great, you know, here's a great practical example of our idea of like the um, this illusion of certainty. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, if it's okay, so certainty doesn't even exist yet. We we cling to the idea and the concept. So then, how does that? What is? What can that look like in our own life? Well, for me, I was like man, I really, you know, I I had this, this strong, I was certain 
<laughs> I was I was certain that um, something was really wrong with me, and that I was not able to have great relationships, mm-hmm. like friendships, yeah, any category. Okay. <laughs> friendships, Lovers. boyfriends, husbands, nothing. Yeah. No, it's all bad. So I, I mean, I was certain. I was like, these these don't work out for me. The reason I know that is because I look back, and every relationship I've ever had has always ended in a fallout and something bad happening. Right. So that would be my, I'd look back and I was like, yeah, I'm certain I'm look, look, you're validated. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, hello, there's evidence to support this. And so then I would take my step forward, which could have been a step forward into the unknown. Like what if, what if it was possible for me to have great relationships? But I wasn't, I was, I was certain because I I couldn't handle the, what if it was possible part? It was no, I already know. Mm -hmm. So I'd step forward and someone would come into my life and I would do all kinds of amazing things that would ensure that the person (laughs) would definitely (laughs) want to get out of there. (laughs) And then I was like, see, see every time, you know, but I couldn't, it was like the, my unwillingness to, to and look I, at again, that. without judgment, I say I'm laughing because, and you are, because we get it, you know, it's, 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 you can look at it all with, with humor and objectivity and it's funny. It's like, oh, but by God at the time, you know, it was like, yeah. no, you don't understand, you know, this is my life. And I, and I was creating it and I can say, you know, with the best of intention and with everything I understood at the time, but that, that was, it. I was certain. And I created lots of things like that. I had lots of certainties that I did not like, but, um, we're powerful. It's, it's the best news and the worst news, depending yeah. on which, yeah. One, yeah. which way we want to look at it. It's just, it's just awareness. It doesn't have to be wrong nor right. 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 You know, just right. like you said so beautifully and elegantly when you were describing your journey that it led you to where you're at. So even yeah. those levels of being and creating, you know, relationships to pull away, it taught you something or caused you to have more time to do this or that or whatever else it was. But now right. you might be sitting and having a position and anybody that's listening, how do I create the thing that I desire now? It might have served me to not have the thing that I desired because we don't want to make anything wrong in our past, right? You know, right. we're right. just going through a journey and everything teaches us, you know, but if we say, okay, yeah. now I'm open and I want to have the different experience of a committed, beautiful, deep, passionate, whatever, fill in the blank relationship. Well, how can I start to make the changes? Because doing what I've always done is going to get me the same results that I've always had. And I want to do totally. something different. Right. Right. Yes, absolutely. And that, that's the perfect lead in into why do we have such a hard time following our dreams? Mm -hmm. You know, um, because if, if our dreams, that would be our most, uh, the the dreams tend to be the things that align with our truest nature, we'll say, or our Mm -hmm. most, you know, what our, our, our own personal desires, you know, it's, it's like what I would, what Erica would really love to do, you know, Christina would really love to do. It's like we, what we would, you know, what we want. And each individual has their own dreams that are in them and everything that it takes to follow your dreams. You, there, there is a constant steady stream of uncertainty Mm -hmm. only because it is, it's going to keep going new and new and new and more and expansion Mm -hmm and new and more and expansion. And that's how we, that's what we are. And so that's, and following our dreams is that open flow. And so there has to be, um, this part of us that says it is okay for me to continue to be in this space Mm -hmm. and continue to learn and to continue to what, what our culture might call fail. You know, it might look like failing. It's, it's that perception. So Um, and so following our dreams, you know, if we're always looking out at what's Joe's going to do, what's Mary going to do, what's Sally doing, what do they, what, what does everyone say that my dream should be? And then we try to stifle ourselves into a place where I don't want to do, I don't want to be, we'll say an accountant because I'm, I'm not that good with math. I'm good with money, but I'm not good with math. (laughs) Those can be two different things. Um, and I mean, if I tried to be an accountant, God help 
everyone, you know, <laughs> the clients and me and them. But I mean, I I would be miserable, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'd be forcing myself. Yet that's what's happening to a lot of uh, a lot of us. Where, you know, it definitely happened to me. Where I was in this constant struggle of, I think that I should. I, I mean, I can't just be. I can't just open businesses and. <laughs> You know, it just seemed really crazy. And I can't just open businesses and um, be my own boss and make my own schedule. Because if you would have asked me, Erica, what do you really want? I'm like, "Um, I would like to be financially free and have a lot of time freedom. And I want to be able to do that so that I can spend a lot of time with my friends and family and be able to contribute in a in a bigger way back into the world. That's what I'd really want to do. And they're like, oh, that's really nice. So what are you going to when are you going to get like a job, you know? <laughs> Because that sounds like la la land, you know, and every, everyone wants that. And I, and so over the years I've come to go, you know what? Yeah. Everyone kind of does want that. Like it doesn't have to come in the same way, but it, that comes very naturally Mm -hmm. when we're in alignment with, you know, giving ourselves a space to go, okay, so what do I, what do I want? Yeah. What do I enjoy? Mm -hmm. I'm open to the possibility that I could actually make a, an entire living and make, and my life could be everything that I've ever wanted it to be. Most of us won't even get open to that. Cause it's yeah. like, well, I can't question that. Cause look at my physical reality. That's smacking me in the face, you know? Yeah. And it's like, so I, I just have a huge passion for helping people, um, kind of awaken to their own ability to their own power in their own life, you know, and the power of perception and the power of, um, the simplicity of a mind shift with the science that says, dear Lord, I'm telling you, you focus on it. That baby (laughs) turns into a thing, like it or not, love it or not. (laughs) You know, that might be the best news. That might be such a bummer depending on what you're focusing on. Um, but that just can't be, a. I, I'm just committed to sharing that in, in many, many ways with lots of people forward so that people can be empowered to, they don't need me or anyone else to change their life. I, I just feel like it's the light switch. Like I just want to yeah. go in rooms and be like, okay, there's a light switch, put your finger on it. This is what you do. And yeah. they're like, stop, <laughs> stop. You've been, I've been fumbling around in the dark, running into stuff for how many years? You know? And it's, and like, it's so easy. Ding. Why didn't someone tell me? And so I just want to tell them, you know, like, yeah. just like someone and all these people and texts and wonderful things that showed up for me as I, you know, so I just, that's my dream. And so, and and I know that a lot of people, um, have, uh, it can be really overwhelming. <clears throat> You're an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. Not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur, but there yeah. are a lot out there. Um, there's a lot of people that have messages that they want to get out into the world. Um, and I, I just have a strong passion for being able to help people, um, navigate that because I feel like until they're, until we're all on the, on the bright and shiny, feeling good, you know, everyone needs to show up in any way that they feel led to, to, um, you know, together we rise. So of course. Yeah. You know, so it's like the hundredth monkey syndrome. We just need a certain level to change everything. (laughs) Um, I love that. And, and so I know that you do private sessions with people. You also go, you're going to be all over the world doing your national book tour and at every place that you're going to be, you're going to do, um, a a motivational night speech Mm -hmm. insight, uh, transformational, um, Mm -hmm. uh, session with uh, a group of individuals. Um, where can people find you and, and what other kind of work do you work remotely with people? Like, you know, I, I want to make sure that people that are hearing this, if they're drawn to say, I, I want that. I want to, I I want to have the light switch turned on for me (laughs) (laughs) or, or I want to learn how to turn the light switch on. Yes. Um, Yes. No. Okay. I love that. Thank you. Um, I, I was, I do do private sessions, but I, predominantly work in groups and online at this point, which Mm -hmm. is because I can help a lot more people in time and space, Yeah, you know, for everyone that helps them. And there's only 24 hours in a day as far as we figured out right now. So, you know, there might be new possibilities in the future, but but right now, 
I know. Uh, it's true. No, so it, it is. I, I found that I can do a lot more that way. Um, and what's really fun is um, on this tour, I will be actually unveiling two um, really amazing programs. One is called Powerful You, okay. and the other one is called um, Soaring Success Mastery. And both of these programs are, are just going to be so useful and in a way, and so people can do them at their pace and whatnot. And so that's that I, cause I've been, my heart is to, I, I don't want me to hold up <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm always like, how can we all get the most out to the most people, you know, just cause it's, Absolutely. it's great that way. So, um, so that will be really useful. Um, and, but it's at ericainspired.com is where you can find all of the stuff. I so. love that. And yeah. I'm excited to come to you. Yes, Saturday. Liberate Hollywood. Saturday, September 15th uh, from 1 to 4. And, yeah, yeah it's going to be a blessing to have you. If you, had to leave pe- if you had to leave people with a little bit more, um, one bit of information, wisdom, knowledge, what would it be? whatever is coming to a person consistently about what they need to do. Many people are, are asking, like we all have questions. My big thing I would say to people right now is listen to your own intuition. Mm. It's not about a teacher that's out there. There's nothing. It's not a, it's not a tactic. It's not a method um, I love all of those things because I love to learn, mm-hmm. but you, you know, mm-hmm. you already know it's in you and, uh, it's okay and safe for you to listen to you. I You're right. <laughs> the guru is inside of you. It's so true. Like you will never be lost with yeah. yourself. So anyway. I loved doing this. Thank you so much for doing this with me and you're fabulous. And this was, I'm in total gratitude. So thank you. Me too. And I'm looking forward to meeting you in person. And until then, have a good uh, week or month or couple months and depending, you know, when people are listening to this. All right. That's true. Uh, tune, right. tune in to us next time. If you like uh, this podcast, then please leave a feedback and information. It just helps it rank a little higher for more people to find it. And join us next time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.